Today's class is going to be more advanced than the class that we did last week. And it's really not a class, it's more of a demonstration. Um, but Excel is a very powerful uh, thing. So after we go over a number of things, there are still many, many more things that you can learn from Excel. What I'm going to be doing is doing a quick review of what we did last week. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but um, just to give you an idea, because I want you to see how different the information is that we're going to use tonight than it was used last week. We're going to be doing some work with lists, and um, I'm going to show you how to sort them, filter them, take subtotals, and actually turn them into pivot tables. And then we're going to do some stuff with um, what of analysis. Um, and that's a, a great little tool if you're trying to um, change some information without really changing it. And you'll see what I mean when I, we get there. And then um, I'm going to talk about, um, I'm going to uh, show you a, a sample budget and something that you can actually do with it also. And that is also a what if analysis that probably, but bullet could have probably been indented, but that'll be okay. And then um, I'm going to show you some of the logical functions that um, we have in Excel. And there's over 300 of them. And most people don't know all of them. But if you work a job that has some very specific ones, they will probably show you how to use them. So for a copy of today's files, um, if you send me an email at officeguru at gmail.com, um, I'd be glad to send them out. Just tell me um, if, you know, if you want the advanced file. If you also want the file from last week, I'd be glad to send that to you also. And this is um, a, a link to the recording from the first section. So if you want, I can send you this PowerPoint and then you'll have the links in here. Otherwise, if you want to um, just jot them down, um, then um, you, can, you can start with the other one if you want and then go on to this. Okay, so let me get our Excel up here. Okay, so last week we were talking about um, taking totals and doing, you know, doing some mathematics here. And I started by merging and centering the title. And if you have ever worked on a typewriter, you know how hard it was to get that title centered. You had to start in the middle and backspace two for every character. And if you had an odd number of characters, it never quite looked exactly right. But um, uh, Excel will do this for you. Um, so will Word, by the way, and PowerPoint. And that way, if your columns here change, then um, this was, is like on a rubber band and it will just snap back for you. you. Once you have that, you can change the color if you want. You can make it bold. You can make it italicized. Um, you could actually underline it, but most people don't do that anymore. You can also select a range and bold it if you wish or do whatever you want with it. So this is kind of like a pretend sheet for a manager that would have three divisions and he's got his figures for the first three quarters. And these figures might be in hundred thousands, but somewhere it would say figures are in hundred thousand. So they wouldn't have to put quite as many zeros in there. To take a total, what we did last week was we hit the auto sum button here. And this is a function. And this is the sum function. So it's read as if you were adding the range B4 through D4. So this is going to pick up B4, C4, and D4. And then I'm going to click the check mark. But I'm also going to show you another trick that you can do when you're using equal sum is if you have a number of rows that you have to sum, you can actually select the rows first and then hit the sum button and they will all go in. So you have B4 through D4, B5 through D5 and B6 through D6. Then we'll take a grand total here. And it's a good idea to always check your range. And this is C4, E4 through E6. And I'm gonna click the check mark. And if you hit enter instead of the check mark, it's not a big deal. It just means you'll go down one cell like over here. We did percent of total last week also, where we started with an equal sign because that tells Excel that we're gonna be doing some kind of calculation. And we're going to click on the total 
and then divide that, divide is the key with the question mark on it. I'm gonna divide that by the grand total. And what this is going to do is to tell us what percentage of this grand total each of this, these division, each division was responsible for. But we also have to lock in the E7 so that it doesn't uh, copy down when we copy down like this. And the keyboard shortcut for that is the function for key. And that's gonna put these dollar signs in here that tells itself that when this column, when this formula is um, copied someplace, that E7 is going to be locked in and it's not going to change. So I'm gonna hit the check mark and then I'll use our fill handle to get it down. And you can see that this is E4, the total divided by the grand total, but then it will go down to E5 but it won't, it won't go down here, it'll stay there. And then this would be E6. And then we can select the range and make it a percent. And that way a manager that's looking at a, a sheet like this can see that Charleston is doing the best and Atlanta is doing the worst. Um, and this might be a lot easier to see than trying to look at the totals and to determine you know, the percentages against each other. So that was what we did um, last week. We also did charting and I'll just make up a chart real quick. And when you're doing a chart, you don't wanna do the total or the percent of total because you're already using these numbers over here. And if you put them in here, this total is going to be way higher than everything else because it's got all these numbers in it. So I'm gonna click on insert and then I'm going to make this a 3D column chart. And so that tells you, it gives you a visual representation. It also changes the ribbon so that there's a lot of different things that you can do on this ribbon. You can change the chart. Um, you can also uh, make a 3D map out of it. There's all, all kinds of things. And you just really kind of have to play around with it. Um, and we have the chart design tab and the format tab. So these are things that are all specific to the chart so that if I click away from the chart, that all goes away. Another thing that you can do on the, um, for, on the chart design tab is to move the chart to its own location. So if I move it and I say, I want this to be on a new sheet and I'm gonna call that my chart. And I click okay. And now you can see that the A, B, C, D and the one, two, three, four, everything is, is gone. You can still change all these things from the ribbon but um, you don't have all that stuff in the background that kind of detracts from the chart. So next, I'm gonna see, show you this uh, data here. And as you can see, this is totally different. Instead of this being um, you know, uh, uh, three, uh, three locations with uh, three quarters worth of work, um, it's a list. Uh, and this would be something like a list from a bookstore. Now this particular list is not really in any order. Um, the original uh, uh, file had another column that was by date. So it was actually kind of sorted by date. But when you take a look at it, you can't really tell anything about this data. Um, you don't know if there's more than one criminal justice discipline. Um, we, well, we can see that it's here, but we don't know how many. Um, we don't know if there's more marriage and family. And within that area, we don't know, um, you know how this shakes out. So we can't really tell much about the sales um, or the units sold. And if you own the bookstore and you were getting a budget ready for the next year, it might be nice to know which of these things were helpful to you. So there's a few things that you can do with um, these things. And um, the first one I'm gonna do is to show you how to filter. And this, uh, we're gonna be using the data tab a lot tonight. So I'm going to click on the data tab and I'm going to click on filter. And the only thing you need to remember before you do that is to be in the data, because if, as long as you're in the data, the filter will, will be set automatically. And once it's set, you get these cute little down arrows here. And from these down arrows, you can do some filtering. For, you could sort from here if you want, but I'm gonna show you uh, another trick with the sort. But if you take out select all, and then let's say we just wanna see what's in criminal justice. We can just check the uh, box for criminal justice and then we can see what we have going on here. 
Now, this does not delete the data. It's just like a filter in the house. You know, it just filters out so you can see the stuff. This is the stuff that's left in the calendar. Let's put it that way. And now your, your down arrow has changed to a little filter, just like the filter on the ribbon. And there's a little dot there. And so if you point to it, it tells you that the discipline was set to equal criminal justice. And you can do more than one if you want to see a couple of them. So we could do marriage and family. And then that will show us everything there. Now we could also go in here and put something else in here so that um, we could filter even more. And then that would just um, take out the other filter in the discipline because this is for marriage and family. If you're through with this, the best way to do it, well, there's a couple of ways that you can do to get rid of it, but the best way to, to get rid of the filter is to just hit the button here and then it goes away. So that's one thing that you can do. Another thing that you can do is to, um, okay. Just, okay, I wanted to do the sort next. Okay, when you're using a filter, the data does not have to be sorted, but for some other things that you do, it does. Now, if you use the A to Z button here, all that's gonna do is to sort on the column that you're sitting in, and that's really not going to help you. What we wanna to to see is every, the, all the disciplines, and within the disciplines, we wanna see the area. So we would click on the sort button here, and as long as and our data has headers, and Excel is smart enough to know that. If your data did not have headers, then um, when we did this, it would say column A, column B, but headers are a great way to do it because it really tells you what your information is. So I'm going to sort by discipline, and then I'm going to add a level, and I'm going to sort by area. And I'm going to click OK. And so now all the aging and death are together. And within aging and death, the areas are also sorted. So you can see that D, 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 then S, OK? And then here, D, and then J. So that gives you another way of, of looking at your data. OK. Now, what you can also do, um, and you really, and you, um, OK. Oh, I'm just making sure I know where I'm going. Um, Another thing that you could do with this is to uh, set sort uh, subtotals, okay? Um, and when you do set tub subtotals, you actually have to have your data sorted. And I'll show you why in a second. So on the data tab, way at the end in the outline section is something called subtotal. Now, depending on the uh, resolution of your uh, monitor, you might actually have all of these things in outline in a row up here without having to hit the down arrow. So everything that I show you is in that general area, but sometimes you'll have a, just a button and sometimes you'll have a word next to the button. So I'm gonna take subtotal. And what we want is we, we're, we're going to be using discipline and we don't need to, but usually when you're using subtotal, Excel really guesses well as to what you wanna do. So we want to say that every time the discipline changes to something else, we want to add, and we could say we want to add the sales, we could add the unit price or the unit sold, but sales is a good one, but that's what they would normally do use this for. Um, and if you want to keep doing this over and over again, using different things, then you can um, tell it to replace it. But if you want to do a second one, you could leave it there and then you'll have two. And we're going to put the summary before below the data. So I'm gonna click okay, and here we go. And see what this does is it says, okay, um, and every time the discipline changes, well, you have aging and death, aging and death, aging and death, and then it changes to criminal justice. So it goes ahead and it dumps in a subtotal. So down here we have the subtotal. So this is very helpful um, if you just wanna get a bird's eye view of what your information is about. Now the other, and if you didn't sort it, what would happen is if you had aging and death and you had something else, it would give you a subtotal. And then if you had something else, it would give you another subtotal and you'd wind up you know, with stripes. So you don't wanna do that. But when you are in the subtotal, what you can do is you have different levels. So if I click on level one, I just get a grand total for everything. If I click on level two, I just get the totals for the discipline. 
And when you first set this up, you're at level three, but you can also close these and open them and do all kinds of different things, you know, to see what stuff that you want. And then you can always go back to number three, which gives you everything on the page. And I'll just go down so you can see, here's the aging and death total, here's the criminal. Um, and, it, and you can see here that there's, and I, I, I did fix this on purpose, but you see that introduction was spelled wrong here. So it's giving me a total for introduction spelled wrong, and then it's giving me one for introduction spelled right. So I'm going to show, I'm going to take this off and then I'll fix that. Um, so if I wanted to get it off, what I do is go back to subtotals and I say, remove all. And now what we'll do is we'll run spell check. And the easiest way to run spell check is to press the F7 key, the function seven key. And there it see it says, oh, this is, you know, this is wrong. Do we want to change it to introduction? We'll say yes. And then it found another thing here, human sexuality, and that would have given us a problem too. So we'll say, change that too. And do we want to continue? Okay, we'll continue. And then it found something uh, in AGI, but we'll just leave that. We'll just ignore that and then we're okay. So now if we put the um, subtotals back on and we slide down, we'll see that introduction is working the way it's supposed to. So it's a good idea to um, spell check your information every so often because if it's something that you're working with very closely, it may, in your mind, you're reading it correctly, um, but it might not be correct. So I'm gonna take off the subtotals. Okay. There we go. So we did sort, we did filter, and we did subtotal. Now here's another copy of this, but, um, and that, that tells you a lot of information. But a pivot table is a good way to really see a, a picture of the information. And the pivot table is on the insert tab. And if we click on pivot, pivot table, the first uh, screen that comes up, we don't really have to change anything because the first one, it says to select a table or range. And because we're already in the information, uh, we're, we're good. And you can see these little marching ants around the side. So it has figured out the range that we want to use. And we do want it on a new worksheet. Um, we could put it in an existing worksheet, but you actually do run the risk of overwriting some of your data if you were to put it in a, a, a spot that already had data on it. And that would definitely corrupt it. So all you have to do when you come in here is just to make sure that to select the table or range and new worksheet and click okay. And now we have a new worksheet down here and what we have to do is we have to build this, all right? So let's say we want to start with discipline. And because it's a text um, field, um, Excel thinks that you want to put it down in a row, okay? And I'll just show you what happens if you put it into a column, but I'm going to put it back because see, it went down into the row section here and I could move it to columns, but there might be certain kinds of information that would work well with that, but most of the time, when you have a text file, or I'm um, sorry, a text row, um, it's going to look better coming down like this. So the next thing that we want to find out is because um, we're divided, you know, we have this divided into um, um, discipline. Is let's put units sold and unit price and sales in there. And so now what you see is we have each discipline, and it tells us the number of units sold the total price of the unit sold and the sales, which is probably the figure that people would be the most interested in. And now if I click away from this pivot table, that pivot table listing goes away, but I can always get it back by going like this. And I'll show you what happens if we put in the um, area also, then we get, you know, an, it's more like a, a sort. Okay, but I'm gonna take that out for right now. So a couple of things that you can do with this is I can double click this and change it so it doesn't say row, row labels, I can say discipline. Okay, and then for some of units sold, if I double click on here, um, now you have to be careful here because you can't name it the same as 
what it is. So there's already a, a column called units sold. So what we can do is we can cheat a little bit. And if we put an underscore between units and sold, Excel, that is, that's different than just having the two words there. Oops, okay. Let's take out the right thing here. Okay. And we can click okay. The same thing with unit price here. Right, and then the sum for sum of sales. This is going to be harder because there is something called sales, so we could put in total sales. And here we don't actually. I will put in the underscore just to make it even, but I wouldn't have to because they don't. There isn't a field called total sales. So besides that, there's a number of different things that we can do. Um, we can right click here and select number format, and we could say maybe we want to make this currency with two, maybe no decimals, since everything is double zeros here. Okay. So now we have dollar signs here. Okay. Um, other things that we could do. Okay, not on that one. All right, let me go back in here. Okay. If you double click on it, I right clicked and I get the number format, but if I double click on it, I can change the way I'm doing this. So if I wanted to count them or average them or find the minimum or the maximum, um, there's our, those are all things that you could do in here. So besides that, on the design, we could make it look pretty because you have all of these different designs that you can chat, you can use. You, okay. Some of them will, will actually put the lines around some of the things. So I'm just, you know, just showing you a couple of them. Maybe you can get really, really clever if you want. <laughs> okay. So that's a pivot table. Now you can also make a, um, a chart out of the pivot table, but sometimes um, they don't come out, they come out looking really cluttered because in this case, you know, our discipline uh, column, it's got a lot of, a lot of you know, text in it. Um, if this was something like our, uh, on the review where you had Charleston, North Dakota, you know, Israel and stuff like that, one or two words, it, it kind of looks better. But that just gives you an idea of um, how different this is than the uh, data that we had on the first tab. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hit this arrow because I have all these tabs here so I can't see them all. So I hit that arrow, I can go back or forward. And I'm going to talk about goal seek now. Okay. Now, goal seek is part of the what if analysis um, on the data tab. And um, if you've ever wanted to find a total on something and you're, you know, because you have to change, you want to change one number until your total gets to a certain point. So you multiply and then it's not up there. So you, you add something to it, you multiply again and again until you get it. And then you overshoot it, so you have to go back and use decimals. Um, so I'm this. You can use Excel to find these things really, really easy. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a total in here. This is my savings plan, okay? And um, in 24 months, I'm planning to save $225 a month. So let's see what I would get at the end. So I'm going to put in my equal sign. Oops, wrong one. Put in my equal sign. I'm going to click on amount. I'm going to multiply, which is shift eight. There's also an asterisk on your numeric keypad if you have one. Um, so either one will work. And I'm going to click on the B3 for the months. And then I'm going to hit the check mark. And then I'm going to use the fill handle because when you do this, if you use the first column and you say you want to keep it, then you lose this data. So you don't know where your beginning data was anymore. So I'm gonna show you what's gonna happen is, um, I really wanna save $7,000 for um, a down payment on a car, say, okay? So if I'm saving $225 a month, you know, if I take a calculator, I say, okay, um, multiply it by 26, 28, 30, you know, I keep multiplying till I get to 7,000 or close to it, all right? Well, Excel will do that for you in just a couple of keystrokes. So I'm gonna click on the what if analysis uh, down arrow and I'm gonna select goal seek. 
In order for GoldSeq to work, it has to have one cell that's a calculation, and that would be our total here. And I started here because that's the cell that we want to set the cell, you see? So if you start in it, you save yourself the keystroke because you don't have to go over and click on it. So we want to change C7 to 7,000, I'm sorry, C5 to 7,000. Okay, and for the first one, we'll say, okay, um, how much more money would I have to save every month in order for this total to be 7,000? So the one that we're gonna change is the money cell. And I'm gonna click okay. And it's gonna like that. And we're gonna keep this. So I'm gonna click okay. And basically it says that I'm gonna to have to save $291 and maybe 67 cents a month in order to get to $7,000 in 24 months. Okay, so you say to yourself, you know, well, that's not going to work. Maybe I can just hold off buying a car um, and keep saving $225 and see how long it will take me to get to that $7,000. So I'm going to start in this cell where it has my calculation. I'm going to hit Goal Seek. Again, I'm going to set it to $7,000. But this time I'm going to change the number of months. See, last time I changed the amount. So and then I'll click OK. And then it says, OK, it's going to take me 31 months and a little bit more to save my $7,000. So that's a, a great way of using Goal Seek. Um, but as you see that if I click OK at the end, I, I don't have my original numbers anymore. So this is a great way to set up a table to see um, you know, which way you would want to do something like this. And last week we did PMT, which works on almost on the same order, which shows you what your monthly uh, payment would be like for a car if you had, you know, a certain loan at a certain interest rate. So it's kind of like on the same order. All right, so next um, I'm going to show you um, a couple of um, functions. And one of them is the if statement. And um, if you have kids, you've probably used an if statement, even though you might not think you were doing it. Um, because what the if statement is, is that you're testing something. And if the test is true, something happens. And if it's false, something else happens. So if you, you know, said to your child, uh, did you clean your room? And if the answer was yes, okay, you can watch TV. And if the answer was no, you go and you have to clean your room. So that, that would be an if test. So you, you kind of get the idea, especially if you have kids. Now, the easiest way to use a function is to use the insert function button here. And the insert function button, um, this is a misnomer because uh, if you've never used this and you come up, you're gonna have a few things in here. But if you don't have the if statement, you can just select this and type if, if, and hit go, and then it will come up. And then it will be part of most recently used. And you can never even get rid of it if you don't want it anymore. So I'm going to click it because I've used it a million times for teaching. And underneath there, it tells you in computer speak what it's supposed to do. Don't pay any attention to that. Underneath that, it tells you uh, in English what it's going to do. So it checks whether a, a condition is met and returns a value of true and another value if false. Now, if you want to really learn a lot more about the if statement, you can click help on this function and that will take you to the Microsoft site and it'll explain it in more detail and it will also give you examples and it will actually give you data that you can download you know, and try it yourself. But you'll see that a lot of information on the next screen will be very helpful. So I'm gonna click okay. And this is called the function arguments. So these are, um, when we were doing the equal sum, the arguments were the things in parentheses, and it's going to be the same way here. So here's a logical test. And one is um, a value or expression that can be evaluated to true or false. So in this case, we have a list of products and how much the available stock is. And we want to know if the stock, um, the available stock falls under 200, we need to reorder. All right. So we're going to test available stock. And we're going to see if that is less than 200. And the less than uh, sign is the sign over the comma on your keyboard. So it looks like a little arrowhead that's pointing to the left. And we're just going to type in 200. 
And the next one is, what if the value is true? Well, um, if the value is true, then we're going to say reorder. And if you're having any problems, if you do something wrong, you'll see something in red on this side. OK, so there's no red here. And I'll show you later why, why it's important. Um, now, if we didn't have, um, if it isn't less than 200 and we don't put anything in here, what's going to happen when we copy this down is we're going to get the word false. But what we might want is not to have anything in here. And, the easy, and if we hit the double quote two times, that tells Excel that if the value is false, just leave the cell blank. So, and we only have to do this on the first one and I'll click okay. And then we use the fill handle, this little uh, square wart in the lower left-hand corner. Your mouse pointer is a skinny plus when it's on it. And I'm just gonna drag down and it says, okay. So we know that these three products have to be reordered and if, Here's a stock that's over 200, but say this one goes down to 55. Then it would automatically snap in there and say that this one was 201. And now we don't have to order it. So you can do all kinds of things. Uh, uh, there's an unlimited amount of things that you can you do with an if statement. That's why if you go into um, looking at some of the websites where they talk about the if statement, They'll show you a whole bunch of other different things that you can do with it. Now, the next one I want to show you is the AND statement. Okay, and now AND is a little bit different because it's going to test a whole bunch of values and they all have to be true. And if they are, it'll say true. And if they're not, it'll say false. And you don't have any control over the true and false in this time. In this time. But um, you will see what I mean when we go, when we, when we do this. So here is a list of um, kids and somebody has been keeping track of their chores. And if all of their chores are done, then they get to go to the movies, all right? Um, but if any one of these is false, then they will not be able to go. So we're gonna click on here. And again, and will probably not be in there the first time you do it, but you can just type in and. And when you do that, change most recently used to all. Okay, otherwise it's, it probably won't come up. Um, but then after that, you won't have to worry about it. And I'll click on and, same thing, help on the function if you want it. And so we're gonna test each one of these. So I'm gonna click on, on B2 um, and we're gonna say, this has to be yes. And then, oh, I hit, hit the plus instead of the equal, I, I apologize, yes. Okay, and now we're gonna to go to the next one and you can see that there's a problem here um, because in this particular case, you have to put yes between double quotes. Usually when you have a text uh, along with a cell address, you have to put it in double quotes. There's one example where you don't have to and I'll show you that later. So if B2 is yes, and then C2 has to be yes, And then D2 has to be yes. And then E2, and you can do up to 255 conditions, okay? Yeah, let's put that in the right spot here. Okay, so this is gonna be E2 equals yes. Okay, and then I'm gonna click okay. And the first person, Joe, yes, 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 yes. So that's gonna say true. And so you can see by looking at this, you know, who's not, who's going to the movies. Now, a lot of times you can use a combination of different uh, functions to do things. They call that concatenating. That's one way that you can concatenate, but this doesn't really help you, but watch what we can do with the if statement. Now you could put these two together, but I'm not doing that because I want you to be able to see what the logic is here. So what we're gonna say here is, we're going to test this cell and it, we're going to see whether it says true. So I'm going to hear, and now here's where, because true is already a function, you don't actually have to put the double quotes there because it's really part of, it's part of the answer to the other one. So if the value is true, 
what we want is the name of the person. So we're going to put the cell with, that has his name. And if the value is false, we don't want to have anything. So we'll just do the double quotes. And then we'll just copy it down. And you can see that Joe and Margie can go to the movies. So if Sandy comes back and says, you know, I did dry the dishes. You forgot to put this as yes. And we can change this to yes. And then now that's all true. So Sandy comes in there. So there's all kinds of combinations that you can do. Um, when I was doing this on, on a job, I and I had to do two or three of these, I didn't put them together because then you have to really worry about where your parentheses are, you know, because if you have more than one, you have to make sure that every left paren has a right paren after it. And uh, until you get to the point where you've been programming for a long, long time, um, it, 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 can be, it can be very difficult. Excel give you an error message and you're not exactly sure what happened, okay? But those are some of the functions. Now, uh, concatenate, um, we used to do this by hand uh, and real concatenate is um, when you wanna take the things that are in two or more columns and put them together. And that's a function also. And it says join several text strings into one text string. And so what we want here, and this, this by the way, this happened to me at work. Um, I came into work one day and um, my boss was there and he was like falling asleep. And it's like, what, you know, you look tired, what happened? Oh, I, I, I was here until 9.30 last night. Um, we were doing this special program and we needed a list of everybody in the company. And it came down from the mainframe, first name, last name, and we needed it, last name, first name, and I stayed here and I typed the whole thing, uh, 155 people, by the way, um, from scratch. And I, I start laughing. And I'm like, you know, if you would, if I would have known that, I could have done this for you in five minutes. And he's like, oh. I said, yeah, well, you hired me to, to support Excel, so you should, should really use me. All right. So what we want here is Smith, comma, John. So I'm going to click on Smith. Now, the trick here is that you are responsible for the punctuation. So after we have Smith, we want a comma and a space. And then after that, we want the first name. And we'll click OK. And then we'll select it down and we have everything there. So now I had something else on the list that um, but I don't have, let's see if I can do that with something else. Okay. And since we have some time, I wanted to show you something else. Let's say, and I don't, I don't have my budget here, but let's say we have a job and well, let's, let's do this. Okay. So we have January. This is a budget. It's going to be a really small budget for January, February, and March. And on the job, we make $100 here, it's a part-time job, and 200 here, and 250 here. And now for our expenses, we have rent, and transportation, and utilities, okay? And so let's say our rent is 650, and transportation is 100, and utilities is 120. Okay, and this one can be the same. And we'll say that transportation will go up. Okay, and we'll, we can keep this one the same. Okay, so one of the things I want to show you on this is there's something called spark lines, all right? And this is, was recently added to Excel. Um, so if you remember that when I did the... Um, The chart, we have this chart and it's a huge amount of data. Okay. And even if we left it on the other sheet, we would kind of move it over. But if you wanted to just see how you're doing, you know, maybe you had um, 20 or 30 columns of, of data, you could insert a column in between just to get an idea of what the range of the data is by using a spark line. So I'm going to click on insert and we're going to make our spark lines 
lines. So when we pull this up, it wants to know the data range. And so I would select this range and it wants to know where do I want the spark line? And I started where I want it, so I don't have to do anything. And you can see that rent is the same, so they're kind of flat lines here, but these two are different. So you could look and see that transportation has gone up. Utilities started the same, but it also went up. So um, that's a great way of seeing what a little chunk of your data can be. So now if our to we total our expenses, let me just Okay, and I'm going to do this and use this. Okay, and then our net worth here, net income. Net income is going to be your, okay, let's, let's change this before we do this. Otherwise we're gonna come out in the, in the red here. Okay, 1100, 1200. 1250. Okay, and our net income is going to be our, our total income minus our total expenses. All right. Okay. Now, there's another thing in what if analysis that on the data tab that I want to show you, and this is called a scenario manager. And what we can do is say you this, you know, obviously, this is a very small budget, but Say you have you have a budget laid out similar to this, and you get um, you have a, uh, two job offers, and you don't know which one to take because you don't, and you want to see how it's going to affect you. So you could use the uh, scenario manager to set this up. So let's say that the first one, this is going to be job one, and job one is going to be different. Salary, Your salary is going to increase. Okay, so I'm going to say um, your salary is going to increase, and then um, if you take this job and you're going to move, your transportation is going to go up, and your utilities are going to go up. All right, so we're going to click OK, and with the new job, instead of making twelve fifty, you're going to be making say fifteen hundred, and then your um, transportation, because you're a little farther from work, is going to be 155 a month. And then your utilities are, let's say they're going to go down. Um, maybe uh, you were living on a first floor and you had no light, no, you know, no sunlight. And now you're on a third floor and it's going to be really sunny. And so you think it's going to go down to be 100. Okay. So that's job one. Now job two. You have these two possible jobs. So we'll call this one job two. Okay. Two. Okay. And job two, you're going to change your salary is also going up. Okay. And this time your rent is going to go up. And your transportation is going to go up and your utilities are going to go up. But you're going to get a huge raise here. So you want to see how, how this is going to work. Okay, so for this is going to, you're now going to be making 1500 and all of these are going to go up just a little bit. So we'll say that this is going to go up to 665 and this is going to go up to 130 and this is going to go up to 135. Okay, and these are figures that you would have kind of gone around with already, so you have some idea. Okay, so let's get, let's take out one of those zeros. So we don't, all right, so you have these two jobs. So now what we're gonna do is run a summary on them. Okay, and we wanna, uh, and we wanna see how is, how are these changes going to affect the net income? So here's what you get. You get a scenario summary. Now, what you can do when you're doing this yourself is I could put, I could just type in what D2 is, this is, this is job, okay? All right, I don't remember what the rest of them are, but you know, rent, utilities, and transportation. So this is the current values. Now on job one, and this is your, your resulting cell. So on job one, if our salary goes up and these two items go up, um, we're still gonna make more money at the end because we had got such a big raise on this one, okay? And we have the same raise on this one, but the, um, the expenses were totally different. 
So right now our take home after we pay everything off is $350. If we take job one, it's going to be 595. And if we took job two, it would be 570. So this is a great way of comparing, you know, to if you were going to move, how your, your expenses would change. Um, and it's called um, scenario manager. Okay, so we've done goal seek and we've done scenario manager. So that is everything that I have for you today. Um, are there any questions? We went over a lot of stuff and um, I have a file for you. In fact, I'm going to share my screen again and put this up again for you. Um, if you want a copy of today's files, um, here's the email, my email address. And also um, I have a file called Tips and Tricks, which goes over a number of the things from last week or last session and this session it has a section on how to look for more information um, on Excel, um, different places you can go for training. And um, my, without going into it in great detail here, uh, let me tell you, there's some really good videos on, um, on YouTube. And what I'm using is Excel 365, but if you have an earlier version of Excel, except for the spark lines, everything else that I did tonight would actually work for you there. So, question, anybody? Okay, I think we, we have lost. <laughs> I'm still here. Oh. Are you still here? Yeah, okay. Still, I guess I don't have my okay. video showing. There you are, okay. <laughs> Oh, okay. There. Uh, yes. Uh, well, thank you all for attending. This uh, this has been recorded, so we will have a recording on the library YouTube page. And I hope that you follow up with Susan because uh, she has a lot of information to offer. So uh, it was very uh, informative, Susan. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good evening, everybody. Okay. And I'm going to send you an email about some stuff when I get okay. after I leave. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.